On this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet Joseph. Now, Joseph was looking for something more in his life. He found it, and he'll tell you how on this edition of Influence Living. And then you're going to meet Nick. Now, Nick was a Ukrainian soldier and was doing very well. And then something happened in the lives of people around him, and he noticed, and it changed him. And then finally, you're going to meet Janet. Janet is blind. She's been blind for many years, and she has gone through tragedy after tragedy in her life. And yet, she is so positive. What an amazing story. You'll hear hers and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Here on Influence Living, we talk to individuals really from all over the world and we ask them, what has influenced you? What has really made a difference in your life? Have you ever noticed that some people, even though they go through very difficult times, they've, they, they've still got peace in their life or, or in the midst of everything, there's just something secure about them that you don't fully understand? We found just such people. They are going to tell us their story of influence in their life. Up first here on Influence Living, you're going to meet a man who needed to have more in his life. His name is Joseph. He is going to tell us how that he was on a search for something deeper, like many people are in life, and he found it. Someone influenced him. Here's his story. I was raised in a small town, rural New Zealand, in a place called the Waikato area. And I uh, just had a great, you know, upbringing, um, went to church when I was young, and um, I gave my life to the Lord when I was five years old. So I always felt like I had this call from God on my life, and it was a personal call. When I was um, around that age, though, my parents, um, they left church. And so from about the age of five, I never went to church. I never had a community. I never had a, um, a, an upbringing in the faith. I just had this personal uh, faith that I believed that, there, that Jesus was real and that he loved me. And so as I was growing up, I began to just walk with God just by myself. Uh, when I was seven or eight years old, I remember hearing my parents talk in this um, strange heavenly language and I asked them what it was and they said that well this is a gift that God can give you and so I said well I want that gift they said well you have to ask God so I went to bed that night and I asked God God I want the gift of the heavenly language and um, can you give it to me and I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and the first things that came out of my mouth as a seven or eight year old was the heavenly language of God and so I remember these instances when I was about 12 years old. My dad came home uh, from work and he'd had a revival of his faith. And he said, I've got to baptize all the kids. And so all the kids got baptized in the bar, but I didn't want to. There was something, I just didn't want to do it just because my dad told me I had to. And so I remember going to bed that night and I remember saying to God, God, I'm not going to do it because my dad wants me to. I'm going to do it for you. And these are just little boy prayers prayed in the middle of the night. And so the next day I woke up and I said to Dad, I said, Dad, I'm going to get baptized. So I got baptized the night after my brothers and sisters. And I did it for God. But because I had no community, I, I, had, no, um, I had no people around me, I walked away from God. I didn't know how to connect with Him in my teenage years. I walked into a party lifestyle. I walked into drugs and alcohol. Um, womanizing, the college lifestyle, the university lifestyle. But I always would cry out to God and I'd say, God, how do I get free of this? Because I want to know you, I want to serve you. I mean, I was just so, you know, caught between two worlds. And so after I finished university, I was a filmmaker and I was very successful as, at a young age. I was one of the up and coming filmmakers in New Zealand. And but inside I was depressed. I was struggling with depression. I was struggling with manic 
emotional mood swings. I didn't know how to live life in a healthy way and I knew that there was only one answer, that I had to get right with Jesus Christ. And so what happened was I had this Bible that I'd stolen from my mum's bookshelf that I'd kept all throughout university and I never read it but I knew it was there if I needed it. So I took this Bible and I went down to a seaside town in New Zealand and lived with my grandma for the summer. And I said, God, you've got the summer to show yourself that you're real to me because I'm ready to get right with you. And I remember sitting in what was like an upper room area in my grandma's house and opening up the Bible to any page. And I just opened up this Bible to any page. I said, God, speak to me. And I put my finger right on the page there. And I looked at this verse. And it's like my life verse. It was Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, Stand fast in the freedom by which Jesus has made you free. And I was just hit by that verse because I believed in God. You know, I believed in Jesus, yet I wasn't free. I was consumed by addiction. I was in the world. I was, um, you know, hurt by a lot of things that had happened in my childhood. And I could tell I wasn't free. Yet here, right here in the word of God, he was saying that Jesus can make you free. And with all my heart, I cried out to God and I said, God, I said, I know you, but I know there's more and I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to feel and experience your freedom in Christ. Will you show it to me? Will you become real to me? And I remember taking communion and um, I took a cup of tea from my grandma and a piece of chocolate. <laughs> And I said, Lord, I'm going to take communion to you because I want to be free. And I drank the cup of tea as if it was the blood of Jesus. And I took the bit of chocolate as if it was the body of Jesus. And I dedicated my life to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, I know you've been hurt by religion, but I want you to have a relationship with me. And he said, if you commit your life to me, I'll show you what I will do with your life. And that was in that summer period. Within a couple of months, I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Within another month, I was preaching as a young man, just in youth groups all around New Zealand. I just caught this fire from God that whom the sun sets free is free indeed, that there is a freedom, you know, that if we'll say one thing about that, it's that Jesus is not just good ideology. And Jesus, his stories are not just good mythology, but Jesus is the ultimate reality. And that when we call upon him with our hearts, he will come and make him real to us like we've never known before. Joseph's story is certainly interesting, isn't it? He was looking for something more, and he ended up having a supernatural experience that was unexplainable, and yet it changed his life. You can have the same kind of experience. God doesn't love Joseph any more than he does you. The Bible tells us if you will seek after God, you will find God. And that's what Joseph was doing as he was trying to find a connection with God. He found God. I find this, that if we will take a step towards him, God will run towards us. Would you move towards God? That's what Joseph did, and it revolutionized his life. There's so much peace now, and he's doing so much now for, for helping others uh, more than he could have ever done without God in his life. Would you begin a journey with God? Come on. It's not about joining a church. It's not about giving a bunch of money. It's about making a decision to follow Jesus Christ and to believe in Jesus. Jesus says that he's the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can come to the Father except through him. And that includes you and I. There's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus. Let's make a decision to follow him. Come on, say this with me. Let's believe it in our heart. It's not just what we say with our lips. We believe it in our heart as well. God, I need you. I believe in Jesus. Say it with me. Come on. I believe in Jesus. I know that Jesus is God. I know that Jesus died for my sins. 
Please forgive me of all my sins. I make you my Lord today. Amen. Right there. That belief, that confession of, of your words ensures that because of Christ's promise, you have the opportunity to have eternal life if you were to die tonight. And, and here's the thing. Now it's time to grow up in your faith. I congratulate you, but let's do a few things. Number one, talk to God on a daily basis. We call it prayer. Begin to listen to Him, His gentle voice. He doesn't talk in an audible voice, but gentle leadings. And then also, would you begin to read in the Bible? Read who Jesus is. Go to the Christian Bible. Go to the book of John and read about Jesus. And then find a local Christian church or a friend of yours that is a believer and say, listen, grow me up in my faith. I need to know more about Jesus. And uh, ask them. If they don't help you, find somebody else that will and grow up in your faith. And then here at Influence Living, we'd love to know of your decision to follow Christ or maybe you've got a prayer request that we can be praying with you for or maybe you'd just like to tell us your God story. There are the details right there on your screen. Shoot me an email if you would, wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com or you can mail us uh, at our post office box. You see the P.O. box right there here in Orlando. Contact us via Facebook if you would like to as well. You can instant message us there. Go to Influence Living. You can see uh, some of our past programs. Also, you could go to YouTube, subscribe there, and then that way you'll be up to date as we release new segments and new stories from other people. We would love to hear from you here at Influence Living. Well, up next on Influence Living, you're going to meet a fellow by the name of Nick. He's full of personality and life. You're going to enjoy his story. And you're going to hear how that as a former Ukrainian soldier, he thought he had it all together. And then he noticed that God was changing the lives of people around him. So he had to make a decision. Here's his story. I have a family, my mother and my father and my little sister. Yes, we be a not a Christian family. We be as a uh, old, old family. Uh, my father is a worker. He work as engineer, yes. And my mother is a nurse in the hospital. And uh, we live as always live. Uh, just it's uh, just a family, yes. We have problem with my family. We as a, with my sister be as a teenager, and we uh, not speak with our family because my parents uh, we be a teenager and we want a freedom. Yes, and our family say you need work, you need study, and another and another as Ukraine. But we want uh, free. <laughs> we want go where we want, and uh, uh, if we not uh, uh, do what our family do, we have a problem. Yes, as a teenager period, because we have we friendly with the, I, I friendly with the drugs in the street. Okay. Yes, we have problem with the drugs, not uh, big drugs. It's just I smoke, yes, yeah. smoke, dream, and another and another. I have many friends, uh, and I know about God. Uh, and my life is not very good because when I uh, uh, friendly with my friends, who have a problem with law, with uh, uh, drugs, with uh, drinks. Uh, I have a problem with my family. We uh, from, far from my family. Okay. We have a problem. We not speak. We have. Uh, bad situation with my family and uh, uh, my father and my mother very cry for this uh, and my sister too my sister uh, as a me <laughs> and uh, we have a, this, this family this bad situation in our family uh, sometimes who comes to our family see it's normally family but we know we're not normally family because we're not friendly uh, I just come and sleep and stand and go Wow. Go away because my father say you need to work, you need to help uh, m your mother and say, father, okay, I help my mother, but another time because I need some problem, so I need some some uh, do some my works uh, what yeah. I need, and I go and my mother cry and my father cry, and I have heart, my heart is not friendly for my mother. Be. My father sees the situation, yeah. his son is uh, not good, his sister not good, mother cry, and my father. Uh, let's see the Jesus Christ and he, uh, we have uh, relatives who be a Christian and they say my father come in church and pray for his son because you need God because you need God in this situation you do and uh, you not uh, well do this 
let's God do this with your family. And my father come uh, in church, pray, and they, he say, God, I not do, I do everything with my son. As a father, as a man, I do everything, mm. but uh, I not do without you. And God comes in his heart, and he want to go in uh, Saturday in church, and then my mother come with him, and my sister, and I, uh, I uh, stand one. <laughs> and they come to me and say, Nick, may you come with us in church? I say, no. I say, no. Because, and uh, I say no one time, say no two, the third time, yeah. second time. But one time he say, me, he say, okay, you may do everything, but he pray for me. And one time he say, Nick, may you come with us in church? I say him one thing, and I remember this. I say, if I come with you in your church, I will be here, and I not come with you, <laughs> because I know if I come, I stand here, yeah. because yeah. I have a problem. I understand it when I don't, but I say I have a problem, and then he not touch me maybe two weeks. And uh, I come with my father and say, why you not say me go in church? They say, look, it's your, it's your one. I say, I, but I want. <laughs> and I go, and for one pre for, for, for one ceremony, I uh, uh, see my God and say him, God, I not uh, want to live with, without you. I want you because I see my father is uh, changed, my mother changed, my family changed. Yeah. Who I am? I am in my family. You give me this family. I uh, won't love uh, them as you love us. And I say, I be here and, this, and I save you. Uh, my God. First of all, he changed my uh, eyes. I not see. I see my friends who drinks and who smoke, and I say it's not for me. Mm -hmm. uh, then God give me uh, uh, another life. He step by step. He changed me, my char my char character, yeah, yes. my uh, my my see for, for my family, my sister, my father, and I stand help my mother, and uh, we we'll pray together, yes, and uh, I uh, stay as a do another work, I stay my money, and I see freedom is only in God, not freedom as I go away when I go, and then I have no money and have no right. hope, but God. Give me uh, absolutely freedom, and I have this freedom, and I may do with my God always. God changed my heart, God changed my mind, and God changed all my life. Well, I trust that you enjoyed Nick's story. Very interesting, wasn't it? Thanks so much for watching Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Up next here on Influence Living, we're going to meet a lady by the name of Janet. Janet's story is going to amaze you. Hold on to your seat right now and hold on to your computer. Hold on to something. Her story is amazing. Here it is. You know, sometimes life turns out so good and you think you have it made, right? That was with me. When I was 30, life was going so good. My husband had a good job. My three little boys were healthy. They were beautiful. I was taking care of them. I was an at-home mommy. But then one day, my life started just to fall apart. A disease of the retina started affecting my eyesight, and in a matter of 18 months, it took it completely. I became totally blind, and I was devastated. What I was feeling is more than anything abandonment by God because I thought I prayed so hard to ask him, don't let this disease take my sight. There was no cure. There still isn't treatment or anything. So at the age of 30, there I was with three little ones. They were three, five, and seven years old at the time. And my husband, who was also the same age, couldn't handle it. So he announced that he was leaving me. And that sense of abandonment by God, by my husband, and that darkness, physical and emotional, was about, yeah, we're about to do me in. Until one day, a friend invited me to a Christian church. Of course, I went with her because thinking, oh, that's where the miracle's gonna happen. That's where God's going to restore my sight and life will be normal again. But instead, what I heard was a Bible verse in Matthew 6, that says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What he was telling me is instead of seeking to see again, he wanted me to seek him first. That didn't make sense, but I was so desperate that I said, Lord, show me how do I do that? Well, he answered that prayer pretty quick because someone gave me a Bible on audio. 
I begin to listen to it. But I listen to it with my heart. All those years going to church, I was listening to the same verses probably, but with my head intellectually. But this time, it was almost like each verse was written for me personally. I believed it, I embraced it, and everything turned around. And at that time, I realized too, that all those years of going to church, I knew all about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus personally. So I invited him to be my personal savior and the Lord of all in my life, the Lord of my marriage, of my blindness, and of my future. So what happened then is peace began to fill my heart. And see, I had a new set of priorities then. I was seeking God above all. And then he was true to his promise. He started adding everything. My marriage healed. We, my husband and I began to talk together, pray together. Our marriage lasted 42 years. And God just kept adding more and more blessings. And no longer was my blindness something that I could just cry about or be angry about. It was pretty much a blessing because I was able to see God's grace firsthand. And then years went by. I was serving the Lord, getting to know Him more and more until tragedy struck again. My youngest son, 19 years old, was wounded. And when we went to the emergency room to find out what had happened, because Joe was such a good kid, he was captain of the football team, he was a leader in every way, he always went to his Bible study, who could have wounded him? So we went to the hospital and to the emergency room and waited and waited to find out what had happened. And that's when they told us that my Joe had not survived the 23 stab wounds he had received. And in that tragedy, that agonizing pain, totally unexpected, I heard God's voice who was telling me, be still and know that I am God. And you know, I heard that promise from him because I had heard that before. He was the same God who had helped me up through my blindness, who had held me up through the infidelity episode, who healed so much and I knew that he would be there for me. And that's exactly what happened. He filled my heart with peace and with the knowledge and the guarantee that I'm gonna see my son again because when he was 17, two years before he was killed, he accepted Christ as his savior. So I know I'm going to see him again. What a beautiful guarantee that is. And a year later, what happened is something that we never, ever expected. The trial to, to process the man responsible took place. And at the end of the third day, we just prayed and asked and begged God to just bring justice for the horrible thing this man had done, taken my son's life. At the end of the trial, they were the verdict. And the verdict read, we find the defendant not guilty of all counts. We were numb with pain. Went home, picking up the pieces all over again, and I wondered, God, how, how could this happen? This justice is so painful. I don't know if I could take that on top of losing my son. But then as weeks went by, months went by, my husband and I kept praying, asking for peace and for comfort. And one night, we both chose to do something that God had asked us to do, and that is to forgive the man who killed our son. We both chose that night to forgive him genuinely and completely. And then we were able to see the beauty of freedom that forgiveness brings. So I guess my life should be one of misery if it was of pity and bitterness, but it's quite the opposite. My life is overflowing with joy because of what Christ did in my life. He restored me, He healed me, and He allowed me to walk in a path, yes, filled with adversity, but overflowing with joy, with security and confidence, because I know I have Him. Janet Eccles is one of my favorite uh, guests that we have here on Influence Living from time to time. Her story is absolutely amazing. It makes us feel better about the rough times we go through, doesn't it? Now, can you imagine this? She uh, has been uh, blind for so many years. Her husband's abandoned her, not once, but twice. Uh, her son has been murdered, all that she has gone through. And yet look at the peace and the joy that she has on her. Her life is a testimony that Jesus is real. And regardless of what you've gone through, Jesus will help you too. 
He doesn't love Janet any more than he does you. But he's helped Janet because Janet's asked for help. But if you've just been sitting there in your sorrow, feeling sorry for yourself, you've got to change. You've got to ask Jesus to help you. And he will as he has Janet's life. Let's begin a journey with Jesus. If you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, let's begin a journey with him now. Or maybe you're away from him and you know you need to come back to Jesus. Let's, let's say a simple prayer. Come on, say this with me. Let's say it wherever you're watching, whether you're in the, here in the U.S. or in India or Australia, New Zealand or the great country of Iceland or elsewhere in Europe watching our program. Thanks for watching, but let's pray together. Come on, let's do it. Dear Jesus, say it with me. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I know you're God. I know you died for my sins. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I make you my Lord and help me to have the joy that Janet has. Amen. Man, if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, we want to say congratulations. You're going to feel just a load lift. I mean, the reason is, is you were carrying all that sin, that load, and it's gone. God's taken it off of you. You're free. Now you've got to grow up in your faith too as well. All right. So yeah, if you die tonight, you're going to heaven, but there's an ongoing journey to live as well. You've got to begin to grow up in your faith. Begin to read in the Christian Bible. Find out who Jesus is. We want you to do that. Go to the book of John. The second thing is talk to God on a daily basis. We call it prayer. Pray to God. Talk to Him every day. Every time you have a moment, just uh, whisper prayer to Him. And listen for His gentle voice, inner voice. Not an audible voice, but an inner voice. He'll speak to you. And then finally, find a local Christian church or a friend that is a good Christian and ask them to grow you up in your faith. Say, man, what do I do next? I made a decision. I prayed with this ugly guy on TV and, and now I made a decision to follow Jesus. What do I do? And, uh, and begin that journey with Jesus Christ. And we'd also like to know here at Influence Living whether or not you made a decision to follow Jesus or maybe you have a prayer request or, or just want to tell us your God story. We would love to hear it. Email me if you would. Wait at influenceliving.com. Or you can go ahead and just uh, send us a letter. You see the details on the screen of our P.O. Box here in Orlando. Again, my email address is wade at influenceliving.com or go to Facebook and instant message us there. You can also see other programs that we've done, other segments that we've done there on Facebook. You could go to YouTube and see the same thing. You can see segments that we've done. And if you subscribe, then in the future, as we put out new programs and stories, you'll be one of the first to receive them. We'd love to have you. Uh, join us and uh, there on YouTube as well. Well, that about does it for this edition of Influence Living. I trust that you've enjoyed it. Listen, one more thing. If you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church. Go to greenwaychurch.com. You can find out our service times. I'd love to see you join us on uh, one of our Sundays. We have three services in English and uno servicio en español. Uh, that's the fourth service in Spanish. I preach in all the services and I'd love to see you here. Until next time, we'll catch you later right here on Influence Living. Bye-bye.